on today's video, my first impression of the two new commanders, legendary commanders in Rise of Kingdoms, the fourth generation of cavalry commanders are out. In this video, we're gonna go over everything you need to know about them, their talents, their skills, their everything. Everything you wanna know, where to get them, how to unlock them, which one I like, which one I don't like, everything and anything. This is the first impressions video. I have not looked through them yet. So let's see what we find. So sit back, drop a like on the video. YouTube, welcome back to Gecko Gaming. Today we have the two new commanders, legendary commanders. We're gonna go over them like we always do. First impressions and all that neat stuff. Before we start though, I'm a sponsored content creator by Rise of Kingdoms. If you enjoy the content, consider dropping a like on the video and of course hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell to get a notification. We upload Rise of Kingdoms videos every single day. We're gonna stream tomorrow, a crazy KVK war. You don't wanna miss it, trust me. And on top of all that, we're so close to 30,000 subscribers. Thank you all for such an amazing support lately. The two new commanders are out. We kind of knew what they'd look like because some of the images were taken out of the APK. Uh, we also saw out of the APK these pictures right here, which really mean nothing. And then from there came a load of like leakers, right? Tons of people from Facebook to Instagram to Twitter to YouTube to everything to Discord started making stuff up. Now, it's, it's important to touch on the subject for a second because I was the, the original Gecko Leaks. I was the guy who was leaking things and I stopped doing that because the information that I was getting was not as reliable as it previously was. And so quite frankly, to show you the pictures means nothing. I don't see what's the attraction in seeing how the commander looks like and seeing the pictures of what their stats are gonna be. We knew they're gonna be ca cavalry commanders. Does it really matter? And then came all the like, make people making up stuff. I heard this is supposed to be Ashoka. Now, I don't know if that's his full name and Ashoka is just a nickname or not. Um, I heard this is supposed to be like a, 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 a what you may call it, Egyptian commander. Uh, I've heard so many things. All I gotta say is the images are very easy to get. Those who share these images around tend to get them from a very, very simple source that is available to anyone if you really know what you're doing. But they're, they're not reliable and technically they're like copyright infringement the way you get them. So careful using those. But with that being said, let's get into the commanders. I wanna get into this for the record, Gecko Leaks will be back when we actually have a reliable source with real information. I don't see a leak in showing pictures because it says nothing, right? If I showed you, I can show you a bunch of pictures that I had for a long time ago that I thought was gonna be new equipment. And I was sure we're getting tons of equipment sets. And then the um, golden, golden, uh, whatchamacallit, kingdom came out. And all the images that I had were now, are now the cards. They have like little images of like helmets and stuff like that. And so, just so you know, unless the information is reliable and the source is reliable, take it with a grain of salt. And shout out to all of those who use them, who made like clickbaity videos that they know what's going on, because that's really amazing. Okay, so Chandra Kupta Maurya. I butchered that name for sure. It's a cavalry conquering skill commander. Interesting, he's a skill commander, cavalry commander. Something that we've seen in the past. Let's go look through his skills. I haven't looked through this, by the way. This is. Big first time I look through these commanders. Hidden Moon, the damage of all troops under his command is increased by 20 percent for three seconds. At the same time, they gain one stack of blessed, increasing cavalry's units attack by 15% per stack for 10 seconds. Blessed can be up to three times. So the damage to all troops under his command, so essentially damage increased by 20% for three seconds all the way up to 40%, which is kind of nuts. Damage being everything. We're talking every single type of damage, every single type of, everything. Everything falls under damage. I believe everything falls under damage. Um, and the same time you have blessed, you gain one stack, it increased by 15% and can go up all the way to 45% of cavalry units attack. That's kind of crazy. You gain damage bonus of 40% and potentially 45% extra cavalry attack. Oof, oof, this is gonna be a rough one. Royal Elephant Brigade. 
When attacking a stronghold, your troops damage reduction is increased by 2%. When attacking a stronghold, your troops damage reduction is increased by 2%. Gains a stack of blessed after using hidden moon skill. Okay, so you gain a stack from here. And if you unlock this as well, you gain a stack from here too, which means we might have a commander for the first time ever that unlocking its second skill almost instantly might be worth it. I mean, again, there's a lot more in the damage bonus than there is on damage reduction of 10% for sure. I would say getting this to level five, like we always see on legendary commanders is a thing. But if you're not gonna do that, Unlocking the second one to get a second blessed stack is kind of neat. Yo, you're going up to 30% attack for 10 seconds. That's a lot. Considering 10 seconds, uh, it takes you between what? Especially as a skill commander, it takes you between six to nine rounds, give or take, which is six to nine seconds to, to, get, to, to get this. Essentially, this is unlimited. You might have one or two turns without this and then it comes back. This is kind of nuts. Rage requirement of a thousand too. Wow. So this is gonna be there forever, pretty much. Interesting. Artha Shastra. Oh my God. Artha Shastra. Oh lordy. Someone in the comments down below, let me know how do I say that? Because holy lordy. When all this, when all this commander's troops are cavalry, so only cavalry troops, heal health is increased by four percent, and each attack has a fifty percent chance to add a stack of exhaust to the target, reducing their health by 1% and their defense by 1%. Each stack lasts five seconds and can stack up to three times. The million dollar question here is, do stacks reset the timer? In Leonidas's skill, I believe it's his fourth skill, you have a chance to proc a, an extra 10% damage and every time that chance hits, it resets the timer for those seconds for everything. So if this, every time you have a 50% shot of gaining a stack, each stack lasts five seconds, which means you have five opportunities to hit the 50% on the right side, up to three times, it means that essentially once you hit this at the max level, someone's gonna lose 15% health and defense for forever really, because you'll consistently keep stacking these. Five seconds is a lot of time and 50% is a lot of percentage. Here's the health and defense reductions. This is not good for infantry who are supposed to be able to go up against cavalry, but hey, look at that. Oh boy. Self-control, oh, that was the easier one to read. Damage taken by cavalry is reduced by 1%. Damage taken from cavalry. So if cavalry hits cavalry, less damage done by them. After using an active skill, all troop march speed is increased by 5% for three seconds. Meanwhile, all stacks of blessed are removed and damage is dealt to the target based on the number of stacks removed. Okay, after using an active skill, which means after you use this, all the stacks reset. Wait, so the active skill gets a stack and once it's procced, the active, the, this thing loses it? So essentially the idea is these guys should, this guy should hopefully give you one somewhere along the way. You gain a stack at all time. So you're always at one stack because this is passive and it'll always be there. Once this is done, you have a stack, but, and now you're at two, but guess what? This resets it, what? Oh, this is so confusing. We're definitely gonna leave some questions to Lilith. This is first impressions. All the questions you guys might have about these commanders, leave them in the comments down below. I'm gonna send them to Lilith with my questions tonight and hopefully tomorrow for the stream we'll have some answers. Now, this is super confusing, but the direct damage factor of potentially 1500, uh, stacks are three times, march speed bonus of 25% and cavalry damage reduction about 5%. I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this. This commander seems to be all sorts of broken. And, and the expertise, the blessed effect can now stack up to four times. But when do you get a fourth one? Wait, you get one here, gain a stack, okay? So you gain one when attacking a stronghold. You gain one when attacking a stronghold. You gain one when you do this and you lose everything after that. So where are the blessed stacks 
I'm so confused. Maybe they come from the other commander. We'll see. Let's take a look. While in Alliance territory, each attack has a 50% chance to gain one stack of Blessed. Aha! Outside of territory, each attack has a 50% chance. Their effect can only be triggered once. This effect can only be triggered once every five seconds. So after five seconds, you have a 50% chance of getting a stack, which is five rounds. In six to seven rounds, six to eight, nine rounds, we'll call it, you'll proc this and then those stacks go away. This will, al this will always put you at one. And then if it's expertise, you have a 50% chance for the first few rounds to get to number two. This will put you at number three. And then it'll take them all away because of this. I'm so confused as how to how these blesses work. We're gonna definitely need a little input in here, but yeah, so far this commander looks interesting. The peacock will soon arise again. Wow. Okay, nobody thought about that line thoroughly. Um, Commander excels at skills, blah, 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 blah. And the way you unlock him, mightiest governor commander. What do you know? Well, I guess we're going to have to train soon for this bad boy. Our next commander is William the First. Now, William the First might have been a little bit easier to guess, I guess, because uh, he had this in here. And it's like, I saw someone say that it could be William. It could not. This is a Britain Empire um, commander for the record. This guy is other. What is other chat? You know what is other. You know what is other. Do we know which which civilizations are coming? Maybe. Are there civilizations coming? Maybe. That's all I'm saying. With that being said, this is a cavalry versatility attack commander. Um, he is, of course, the Wheel of Fortune commander coming up very soon. Let's go take a look at his skills and see if we understand a little bit better how Blessed works from the other guy. Hidden Bloodline it deals damage to up to three targets in a forward fence facing a rectangle shape. Interesting, rectangle area. Forward facing rectangle area. It's not fan, it's rectangular. Interesting. Um, damage dealt, essentially it means that you're doing damage to, to marches that are further, far, for, further away from you than the closer ones to you. If you have three stuck to you, you might not hit them with AOE. But if you have a few that are further out, but a bit to the left or to the right, you might catch them. 900 damage all the way up to 1500. Damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15% for additional target. That is typical for, uh, for any AOE type of skill. Attack troops extra skill damage. Attacked troops extra skill damage from buffs cannot take effect and their march speed reduced by 10% for three seconds. So all the way up to 30% march reduction, and you pretty much take away all the extra skill damage buffs from the troops that you're attacking. That's actually cool. That's meant to counter the heck out of archers. And uh, yeah, it's probably gonna do some damage for, for um, infantry too, potentially. I like it. I like the first skill, not bad at all. Charge of Hastings. This is a passive skill, by the way. A thousand rage regen, and it's an active skill. All cavalry units under his command get their attack increased by 10%, all the way up to 20%, and their march speed by 3%, all the way to 15%. When in alliance territory, all troops' damage increase by 2%, all the way up to 10 This, when in alliance territory line, is something y'all are going to see a lot in the coming future of Rise of Kingdoms. I will tell you that you're also going to be seeing more skills that have to do with um, mixed troops, but not on on troop-specific troops. Troop-specific troops, which sounds really weird, but you understand what I'm saying. Like cavalry, infantry, and archers will always lean towards that. But we're definitely going to start seeing things like Theodora and Yisun Sin, but instead of being a uh, garrison ones, being potentially uh, some, some sort of attack ones. I'm telling you, y'all are not listening, but I'm telling you, the meta is going to shift to fighting on the on your side versus not fighting on your side, on your alliance territory, not on your alliance territory, multiple types of troops, one type of troop. Rise of Kingdoms is in the process of making its war mechanics a little more complex, so there is more to do and more roles that players can play instead of just unlocking commanders. So this is really neat to see that they're rolling with this. So essentially, as long as you have cavalry, and by the way, it says all cavalry units under his command. It doesn't say you have to have only cavalry. It's a very important line to remember because if you were going to use uh, Yi Sun Sin leading 
char leading commander, for example, on the open field, and then you choose as a defensive march, and then as a secondary, you choose to put uh, you choose to put William the first with a mix of 80% cavalry, 10% uh, archers, and 10% siege, for example, or 10% archers, 10% uh, 10% in percent infantry, since you don't want siege on the open field then he will buff up the the 80%, the other 20 will not get buffed up, but Yi Sun Sin will do to everyone stuff. So remember the difference here. This guy had when all the commander's troops are cavalry. This one says for all cavalry. It doesn't mean that he has to have only cavalry. That's what I'm talking about. While on the map, all commander's cavalry units attacked is in all commanded cavalry units attack is increased by 10%. Again, that same line. And it goes up all the way to 20%. And normal attacks have a 10% chance to inflict direct damage to the target, a massive direct damage to the target, 10% chance for every attack. That's nuts, 800 damage. It's not bad at all. If the target is surrounded, it will be extra damage taken. Damage factor, number of surrounding times 40 all the way up to 90, up to five stacks. So theoretically, he, it can go up to 1200 damage Every single normal attack, 10% chance of hitting 1,200 damage. This is a damage machine. Holy lordy. And it's a passive skill too. This commander, I mean, yes, he has this active skill, which does a lot of damage. But realistically, so far, his passive skills prove to me that he is not necessarily, he does a lot of damage without needing to have rage and without needing to have cavalry only. Interesting. I like this guy. Scourge of the North. Passive skill again, when hidden bloodline hits a target, which is this skill right here, this commander's troops gain 10% increased defense for three seconds. When hidden bloodline hits two or more targets, all this commander's troops and nearby allied troops gain a 10% increased defense and 50% rage per second. That is sick. It goes up to 20% defense. If you're hitting multiple targets, your friends are gonna get essentially free defense. I wonder how if this stacks or not. It probably doesn't stack. You'll only be able to have the one. And 150% rage is 150 rage back to your friends is actually nutty. I want to know the 20% might not stack, but the 50 rage every three for three seconds might stack. This is crazy. You're now increasing the rate in which rage is regenerated by having one of these on the open field once more, bringing us to the point where all his troops, not all cavalry, you can have this guy with a Yi Sun Sin on the open field with a mixed set of troops with a heavy presence of cavalry and really get a good return out of this commander. I like him. Out of these two commanders, honestly, this is the one that I am intrigued about the most right now, but we'll see how this will work out. Rest in peace, our gems once more. Enhancing normal conquest. Interesting. So we're enhancing the third skill, not the first skill. Usually the expertise enhance this. So this was uh, while on the map. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, damage. Da -da -da. Okay. So let's see what the difference is. While on the map, all commanders' cavalry units attack is increased by 30%, an extra 10%. And normal attacks have a 10% chance to inflict direct damage factor all the way to 1,000 base. And if targets surrounded, it'll take extra damage up to 1,500 total damage. I mean, I love this commander. I think that this is, this is the direction Rise of Kingdoms has to go in. War is shameful. Not only the conquered, but I didn't read it fast enough. Anyway, his sword is super small, by the way, for the record. But hey, he has a sick, sick, this is a spear slash a flagpole. I don't know, whatever it is. Overall, I love these commanders. I think they're great. I prefer this guy over this guy. They're great cavalry commanders. What they're doing is they're not necessarily gonna break the game. Maybe they will, but I'm not sure they will. They're adding more cavalry utility to future potential mixed troop types. And I love this. Unfortunately, commanders like Genghis Khan, which is super strong when you're looking at cavalry only, when you have all armies led are, uh, what is it, contain cavalry only and contain cavalry only. This kind of commander is an old school commander. I believe the new generation commanders are going to allow more flexibility in the types of troops. It's what I've been saying since the beginning of Yi Sun Sin. Y'all are going to see that happen and you'll thank me later or say, how did you know? Those of you who now don't believe it, 
We'll talk in a couple of months. But this is proof that we are getting cavalry commanders that are not cavalry only. The text doesn't say this guy is, but this guy isn't. It's a huge start. With that being said, technically speaking, you know, technically speaking, I'll be fair. Saladin, I don't believe, has cavalry only in it. Increases cavalry units attack, reduces skill damage, da, 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 da. So I don't think he, I think he is also not cavalry only. It is kind of what Lilith have been doing. I still, I stand by what I'm saying. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. With that being said, what do you think about these commanders? Leave me a comment down below. I'm Gecko. I'm out of here. Appreciate every single one of you. Drop the like, subscribe to the channel. See you on stream tomorrow, 4 p.m. UTC, maybe 4.15. We'll see. And I'll see you all sooner rather than later. Thank you again for all the continuous support and take care. Peace.